Hello! If you've been watching my channel for a while then you will know that each December I do a Goodreads Choice Awards themed reading challenge where I read the books from the top 10 of a specific category or categories and then I let you know whether I agree with the outcome of the awards themselves. And usually I do this as a reading vlog type format of book so I show you the process of reading the books but this year I'd actually already read or dismissed quite a few of the books in the top 10 and then the others that I was needing to read for this video of which I think that there were four I you know when I was reading them I was kind of too busy with work and other stuff to be able to keep on top of a vlog so I decided to do this in a slightly different format this year so I'm still doing the Goodreads Choice Awards reading challenge but at this point I've already read the books, I haven't vlogged any of the process but I am going to speak to you about all of this so it's basically the same video minus the vlog clips which good news will mean that it should be a lot lot shorter. Um, I hope that that's not too disappointing for those of you that were hoping for another vlog. This year I focused just on the adult fantasy category so in other years I've done the YA category or categories and I've done middle grade but this year I stuck to the adult fantasy and the one vlog clip that I did actually film was me reacting to the 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 winners the the announcement of the winner so I will go ahead and insert my initial reactions here Okay, this lighting isn't very good, but it's uh, first thing in the morning and it's the 8th of December, so the results of the Goodreads Choice Award are in and I don't want to wait <laughs> till after work to see who the winners are, so I'm going to react to them now. I think I'm only going to react to... well, we're going to... we'll see, we'll see. So let's view the results. So the fiction winner was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which is interesting because I actually want to read that one, so there we go. Uh, mystery and Thriller, it was The Maid. Historical Fiction, as predicted, Taylor Jenkins read Carrie Soto is back. Here we go, fantasy. It's going to be Sarah J Mass. It's going to be Sarah J Mass, and it shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be, but it's going to be. Hey, there we go. What a surprise. That honestly I find it really annoying. Um Babel did come second, but quite far behind. So Sarah J. Mass has a hundred and five nearly hundred and six thousand votes and Babel has sixty-three. So That annoys me, to be honest. Fairy Tale is next, then the Atlas Six, then the Jennifer L. Almond Trout. I'm pleased to not see that higher, but hey. Daughter of the Moon Goddess, Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, Legends and Lattes, Lost Metal, Golden Enclave, Electra, Kaikei, Book Eaters, When Women of Dragons, Nettle and Bone, The World, We Make, A River Enchanted, Thistlefoot, Stardust Thief, and Ordinary Monsters. So. The whole thing is just a joke. Um, Sarah J Maas should not have won. I have DNF'd that book. So it just like didn't work for me, it didn't work for a lot of people. I don't know why it's rated so highly. Book Lovers won in Romance, that's not a surprise. Emily Henry is really popular, so good for her. Science Fiction, Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. Not necessarily surprised by that either, I think that book was pretty popular this year. Horror, Hidden Pictures, never even heard of it. <laughs> Humour, The Office BFFs, Nonfiction, Atlas of the Heart, Memoir and Autobiography. If this isn't I'm Glad My Mum Died, I'll be very surprised. It is. I'm glad my mum died. That's to be expected. The Alan Rickman Diaries came second. I don't know how I feel about that. You know, he's died and his private diaries have been published. It's a bit weird and intrusive. Uh, history and Biography, Bad Gaze, Graphic Novels and Comics, Heartstopper, Volume 4, no big surprise there, and it won by a long way, 138,000 votes. The next one down is Laura Olympus, Volume 2, at 51,000, so well done Alice. Poetry, Call Us What We Carry, I literally 
don't know anything about poetry. Debut novel. Lessons in chemistry. Okay. I don't, I didn't really have a prediction for that one, but I guess that one's been pretty popular. Young adult fiction. The final gambit. Really? By quite a long way again. Nearly 73,000. The next one down is Loveless by Alice Oseman, which I don't think should have been on here anyway, because um, it's a re-release in a different territory, so a bit weird, but that one got 42,000, so 30,000 votes less. I didn't really think much of The Final Gambit, to be honest. It was fine, but not as good as the first book. Young Adult Fantasy and Science Fiction. What happened here? Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Mm, not necessarily surprising, and it wasn't as big of a gap, so 40 and a half nearly thousand for Gallant, and 38 nearly for Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion, which is actually pretty good going because that's only just come out, I think it just met the cutoff for that one. So middle grade and children's. The picture book I Am Quiet, a story for the introvert in all of us won. Such low votes here, 26, just over 26,000. Next one down from that, nearly 23 for Rise of the School for Good and Evil. Um, Stella Loon, so far down. Anyway, that's it then, innit? Uh, not surprised Sarah J Mass won, but I do think it's ridiculous that she did, because it's not, it's not a great book, and a lot of people don't like it, but it's the same every year, isn't it? It's a popularity contest. Any year that Sarah J Mass releases a book, she's going to win, no matter what that book is. Uh, you know, she could probably publish her shopping list and it would win. So, that's annoying. Anyway, okay, welcome back. So, I don't think my feelings have drastically changed since that reaction. I'm still not a fan of the fact that Sarah J Mass has won again. I don't think she should have, but we'll get into it. So, we are going to start from the top. And, and go down the list. So, as mentioned, unfortunately, Sarah J Mass, House of Sky and Breath did win. And yes, I have this book. I actually bought it in the Waterstones 50% off hardbacks sale, I believe, last December. Although maybe I'm making that up and this didn't come out until this year. In which case, I probably purchased it full price. No, I made that up. It came out this year. So I, I purchased this full price and uh, I DNF'd it. Not even the whole way through chapter one. I read the prologue and I read part of chapter one and I just wasn't feeling it. I did not care at all. All of the negative reviews certainly haven't helped with that, I was listening to the audio, which my sister has, uh, so I was listening to her copy, and I just wasn't feeling it. So I thought, you know, let me put this on pause, and I'll read the other books in this top ten that I haven't read yet, and then I'll come back to it. And I just didn't go back to it, and I don't really have any desire to do so. I don't think it's, you know, it's not a terrible book but it's not a book that I wanted to read. Uh, it wasn't anything I felt compelled to continue clearly since I DNF'd it and I don't think it should have won. I don't think I know very many people who think it should have won uh, but the Goodreads Choice Awards are a popularity contest so this was the winner. I don't... I don't think it should have been. The second place spot went to Babel by RF Kuang, which I don't think is a surprise that this was so high up on the list, and I do think it should have won. I think people would have been a lot happier with the awards just in general, uh, at least the fantasy category, if this had won, uh, but it didn't. It came second, and it's, there's quite a big gap as I mentioned in the in the reaction between Crescent City and this one, but this one I hadn't yet read when the top 10 was announced, and I did expect it to come pretty high up on the list because it has been a very popular release this year, and for good reason. This is a really, really interesting book 
So you'll notice I'm not giving synopses for these. I feel like there's probably no point. You probably know what these books are about. But this one isn't about what it's about, you know? It's not a book that is about the story that it's telling. It's a book that's more so a discussion on the themes that are present within the story. I will say it's very dark, uh, which is not surprising, I don't think, for RF Kuang. And I'm actually currently, as I'm filming this, uh, rereading The Poppy War so that I can finish that trilogy. I'd say this one isn't as disturbing in some aspects as the Poppy War. Again, I haven't read the rest of the Poppy War trilogy, but I have read that first book, and there are some scenes in there, if you've read it, you know, that are quite disturbing. I wouldn't necessarily say that that's the case in here, because there aren't those kind of really disturbingly graphic scenes. This is kind of disturbing in a different way. Now, if you are present on the book to net, you probably saw a lot of the discourse that was happening what, so a week or so ago a with a couple of reviewers who posted very very negative reviews about this book and called it racist which is nonsense uh they clearly those reviewers clearly don't understand what racism is uh unfortunately and they complained that this book made them feel really uncomfortable and they criticised the book for that. But that is the point of this book, right? It is meant to make you, especially as a white person, uncomfortable because it is about colonialism and it's about racism and it is about brutality and about appropriation and about fetishising did I say that right? Fetishising? I think I said that right, sorry if I didn't. Fetishising other cultures and other aspects of other cultures and, and all that sort of thing. And, you know, I'm a British person, or half British person as well, so for me in particular it was, it was uncomfortable to, to have to think about all of the awful things that this country did to so many people globally in the past and, and, and still to this day. And, but that, 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 that's the point. That's the point of this book. That's the power of this book is that it is about the story because it's, it's a novel. So it's about the story that it's about, but it's not really, that's not the point of it. The point is not to tell a story about a young man whose life is turned upside down and who is living this seemingly privileged existence if you were looking from the outside but when you're on the inside understanding that actually that quote-unquote privilege is not what it seems. That's not really what this book is about. It is but it isn't. It's about the atrocities that the British Empire committed. It is about the strength of the oppressed in fighting back against that and the devastating consequences that that results in for them and for innocent bystanders and it's just, it's such a clever book. It really is such a clever book. And if you haven't read it, I would, I would recommend reading it. Um, and if you agree with those negative reviews, then I don't know leave I guess because it's just baffling to me that anybody could be as as oblivious as that I suppose um, I mean it shouldn't be baffling at this point should it really but here we are 
it's not not the point of this video but it would be remiss of me not to mention it um i do think this book should have won i do think that it is brilliantly written brilliantly researched brilliantly uh composed i guess is what i mean um and it's very nuanced and interesting and the elements of language within it were really good. I would definitely 100% recommend listening to the audiobook of this one. I do all of my reading on audio but I would say this one in particular is really good to listen to because of all of those different languages. The narrators do an excellent job of you know speaking in those those various different languages and, and sometimes within the written text you only get the Chinese alphabet words which I can't read um, so it was really useful to and, and you know interesting to hear those Chinese words being spoken by somebody who actually could read those words so I would recommend this book but I would almost even more so recommend the audiobook if possible it is on Scribd in the UK I don't know if it is anywhere else um, but if you have that option available to you borrow it from the library or use Scribd if you have it or whatever uh, if you have that option I would highly recommend giving this one a listen the number three spot went to fairy tale by Stephen King I have the floppy airport paperback edition in case you're wondering why I have a paperback and not a hardback that is why this is my second yeah second Stephen King book that I've ever read and the other one was the long walk which was actually written under his Richard Bachman pen name so this is the first Stephen King book that I've read and it is very much a fantasy I was actually really pleased <laughs> that it was in the fantasy category because that is what it is and it's really interesting because it is the, the title of it is just so right you know it's called fairy tale and that's that's really what it is it's it's part original fairy tale, it's part reworking of existing fairy tales, it's part using different elements of fairy tales to create an entirely new story. It kind of has a little bit of a shift in a sort of plot and style I guess about a third of the way through and I will say that I liked the first third better than the second third, second two thirds, but I was actually quite surprised by how much I enjoyed this. I was kind of, you know, I expected to like it because of the subject matter, but I didn't expect to enjoy it quite as much as I did. And, you know, I, I've heard a lot about how Stephen King includes in a lot of his novels this really sort of disturbing unnecessary sexual stuff that's not really present here it definitely was in the long walk but not really here there is kind of a, a fade to black sex scene that was kind of a bit like random but it wasn't graphic it wasn't gratuitous or anything it was just kind of there and then gone and I feel like he actually did a reasonable job with the ending which I know is another complaint of Stephen King's novels often is that he has these really good premises but he doesn't really stick the landing and I thought the, th the ending was fine with this so I did I did enjoy it I don't really think that it deserved third place but again I'm not necessarily surprised that it got so many votes because it's Stephen King I, same reason as with Sarah J Maas that's that's why this placed as highly as it did. I'm glad it didn't beat Babel, at least. Um, but I do recommend this, especially if it sounds interesting to you. I would recommend picking it up. Again, I listened to the audiobook. The audiobook was good. Not necessarily the most amazing audiobook ever. Not one that I would sort of specifically say if you have the option of print or audio to go for the audio as I would with Babel um, although I suggest immersion reading if at all possible with Babel but this was this was a fun fun read it's quite long it was possibly a bit too long actually to be honest um, but I pretty much 
I enjoyed myself reading this one. Next up we have the Atlas 6 which came in fourth by Olivia Blake. This one I did not read for this reading challenge, I'd actually read this earlier on in the year and I really enjoyed it. It is a very much so a dark academia story, it definitely fits within that genre and it's quite I would say sort of fantasy light. The magic is somewhat scientific in a sense and the thing that kind of really just sticks with me about this story is that all of the characters are just unlikable. There's just so much about each and every one of these six protagonists that is just just pretty bad. Like they're not great people and you you simultaneously don't root for any of them and root for all of them all at the same time. It's really skillfully done. I feel like I'm looking forward to continuing with this series. I do actually have, just behind me here, I don't know if you can just about see it, uh, the sequels, so The Atlas Paradox. I am not going to read that straight away because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the third and final book to come out in 2023 and then I'm going to reread this and then finish out the trilogy that way which is something that I want to do more of in 2023. I'll speak about that in a different video but this one it's quite intricate there's a lot going on there's a lot to kind of keep track of especially because of the scientific type magic but I did really enjoy myself reading this and I do look forward to continuing on with this series. The book in at number five was The War of Two Queens which is Blood and Ash book four. I do not have it to hold up for you and I have not read it. I have only read the first book in this series. I'm not convinced that I'm going to be continuing with the series anyway and I certainly wasn't going to catch up with it just to be able to read this book for this challenge. I never do that any year so I didn't read this one. The next one is Daughter of the Moon Goddess which I have read but it is at the bottom of a massive stack of books and I don't want to have to disassemble the whole thing so I don't have my copy to hold just now sorry about that um, but I will put a picture on screen for you. Daughter of the Moon Goddess I read way way back I feel like right at the beginning of the year I got it in a fairy loot box I want to say and I read it virtually straight away and I really enjoyed the it's it's retelling right it's a fairy tale not really a fairy tale what's the word I'm looking for myth legend something along those lines <laughs> retelling but from Chinese mythology so I wasn't familiar with the with the storyline before that but I did still really enjoy it and I definitely got that that myth legend retelling vibe from it and I really enjoyed the character again I want to read the sequel but I feel like I don't remember enough from the first book to read the sequel so you'll have to let me know if I really need a lot of detail fresh in my mind for this one. It doesn't stick with me a huge amount which I think is telling in, an, in and of itself. I enjoyed it, I liked the writing, I liked the slightly whimsical nature of it, I liked the uh, the, the characters and the storyline was fun but as with most myths and legends the storyline was pretty predictable. I kind of knew what the plot beats were going to be and that m intrinsically makes it a little bit generic, right? It's very different because it's a different kind of mythology. It's a mythology I'm not necessarily familiar with but it's not necessarily an unexpected because the plot beats across all of these kinds of stories are pretty similar. So I really enjoyed it uh, but I don't remember tons about it and so I don't know if I need to reread it before I read Heart of the Sun Warrior. So if you have read both and you have any advice on that let me know. Um, but I did like it and it will probably come somewhere in the middle for me as well. I, if you haven't seen these videos before I always do a comparison stack at the end. Uh, the next one after that was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana which I absolutely loved. This one is such a 
wholesome and cute story. This was actually my vote for the winner because I just feel like this is a debut novel, it didn't have as much of a chance unfortunately up against some of these bigger authors that we know really well and I really really enjoyed this. It was a very sort of fun and heartwarming story. It's, you know, it follows a great main character, it has a great supporting cast of characters, it's just a little bit fantasy but it's kind of in that cosy fantasy category that we've seen coming out in the year 2022 and I really hope that that continues because I really enjoy it as a subgenre of fantasy that has kind of emerged this year and we'll see another one in just a few moments time because it's it's very character focused which I love as a character character focused reader I definitely enjoy a story that's more character leaning than plot leaning and it, this definitely is that. These books are very much centred on the characters and the emotions that they're feeling and the world that they're living in and not so much on the events that they're dealing with. There are still some fun events that the characters deal with and there's some interesting drama and a little bit of mystery which keeps it all kind of ticking along, keeps you engaged but it's not really what the book is about and I thoroughly enjoyed myself reading this one and I can definitely see myself picking up and rereading it when I need a little pick-me-up and it's got a cute romance in it. Not as great as the romance in the, An Undertaking of Heart and Mercy which I think I preferred very slightly to this one but again really similar vein because they're in this cosy fantasy subgenre that I suppose really started with House in the Cerulean Sea which I loved as well in the year that it came out so there you go. And as promised the next one is another one within that same subgenre and that is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I actually started reading this just before the top 10 was announced because I was pretty sure this was going to make it into the top 10 and I wanted to read it anyway. Uh, so I was, I believe I was reading this when the winners were announced, although I could be, could be mixing that up. This is probably even less plot heavy than The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches was. It really is just about the characters and their lives and them living those lives and they deal with a little bit of third act conflict as it were but it's not the story's not really about that and it's just really really fun and I also really liked that the audiobook narrator was the author Travis Baldry which I always like it when authors read their own books so I really enjoyed that and I really enjoyed this book it was just very fun and cosy and easy to read it's very quick it's quite short and I think we're getting a sequel in this world at some point so I look forward to that. In at number nine we have The Lost Metal by Brandon Sanderson which of course I read before the Goodreads Choice Awards winners were announced because I read it basically as soon as it came out to no one's shock or surprise. I really enjoyed this. I feel like I can't talk too much about it because it is the finale to a second series within this Mistborn world so if you haven't read the original trilogy then this would be saying anything about this would be massive spoilers for that and for the rest of the books that come in this series before it but I enjoyed it I thought that the conclusion was good I'm not as big of a fan of era two as I am of era one and I think it makes sense that this comes really far down in the top 10 because the readership of this is really limited right like it's only people who are fully up to date on all other eight books within the Mistborn series so your pool of people that would love this is smaller the fact that it's in the top 10 at all is just just because it's Brandon Sanderson there's probably a lot of people voted for it that haven't read it whatever but I enjoyed myself I don't think I want to say anything else. And then the last book was The Golden Enclaves by Naomi Novik, which I have not read. I read earlier this year A Deadly Education, which is the first book in the Scholomance trilogy, and 
it was fine but I didn't love it and I had no desire to continue with the trilogy so I've kind of drawn a line under that series and so I didn't read The Golden, Golden Enclave nor did I read the second book whatever its name was I can't even remember uh, so I didn't read that one but that's only two out of the top ten that I actively decided to not read and one that I DNF'd and it just so happened that that number one was uh, the, the that DNF was the winner but c'est la vie uh, we've discussed that already so let me I'm just gonna grab a random book as a placeholder for Daughter of the Moon Goddess just so that we don't forget it because I'm being lazy and not getting it out but I am disregarding the ones that I intentionally did not read. So this was the... Oh, these are heavy. This was the Goodreads ranking. So we had House of Sky and Breath, Fable, Fairy Tale, The Atlas Six, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, whoop, the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, Legends and Lattes, and The Lost Metal, with those ones that I took out in between there somewhere. Where am I going to put these myself? How am I going to rank them? Well, I think it goes... I'm going to actually just stack them here to save my arms for the moment. So, naturally, House of Sky and Breath is going to go at the bottom for me. What is going to be next? I think we're going to have Fairy Tale next. This is not to say that I didn't like this one. It's leaps and bounds above House of Sky and Breath, but I don't think it's better than any of these others here. So that's going to be my, what's that, number seven spot, because I've got eight of these. I think I'm next I'm gonna have Daughter of the Moon Goddess which that's not Daughter of the Moon Goddess obviously but <laughs> it's my placeholder so that's Daughter of the Moon Goddess after that I think we're gonna go with the Atlas 6 yeah after that we're gonna go with the Atlas 6 followed by Legends and Lattes I feel I think I feel comfortable with that then so <laughs> Here's the thing, right, when I'm ranking these, these rankings are based on my own personal enjoyment and what I like in books, right? This isn't who, the, the order I think it should have gone in, I'll address that point in a minute. I think what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to do Babel next, and then I'm going to do Lost Metal, and then my number one is still the one that I voted for the very secret society of irregular witches but I want to caveat that by saying I don't think this is the order that they should overall be in this is just my enjoyment level so my favorite book out of all of these is the very secret society of irregular witches followed by the lost metal just because it, it this this world is just kind of you know home to me in a way and it was really great to see the end of that particular story arc um, but it's really close with Babel those two could easily be the other way around for me to be honest then we've got Legends and Lattes, The Atlas Six, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, Fairy Tale, and then House of Sky and Breath. I would leave House of Sky and Breath at the bottom if I was doing kind of the the ideal sort of placing of these eight that would still I mean that wouldn't even be in the top ten to be honest with you but if it had to be in the top eight I guess then it would go at the bottom uh fairy tale would stay there I think I think to be honest these would stay pretty much where they are and I would just do this can you even see that so I would put although to be fair I'd probably put lost metal there and have it like that so what I think should have happened, it should have been Babel to win, followed by the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, followed by Legends and Lattes, The Atlas Six, Lost Metal, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, Fairy Tale, and House of Sky and Breath. I think 
that's where I'm going to leave things. You will have to let me know what your own personal ranking for these books would have been and let me know what you think of the overall results. I think pretty much everybody in the fantasy community is united on the fact that it shouldn't have been Sari J Mass, even if you liked that book. I don't think you thought it was better than any of these others, particularly Babel. Uh, so there we go. I have heard that Sarah J Mass does not have a book coming out next year, so maybe we will see somebody else <laughs> take out the number one in fantasy next year. But this was fun nevertheless. I've enjoyed it as always. Sorry that this format is a little bit different to how I normally do things, but hopefully you've enjoyed it nevertheless. And that is it for this one. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you liked this video and want to see more like this from me, then do think about hitting that subscribe button. And I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks. Bye.